this video, we're talking about the quotient rule for exponents, which tells us that when we divide one variable raised to an exponent, so here in this first example, we have the base x, the variable x, raised to the exponent m, divided by the same base variable x raised to a different exponent, n, that the result of this division is just x to the exponent m minus n. So in other words, we subtract the exponent that's in the denominator from the exponent that's in the numerator, and that's how we combine these two into one term. The only condition is that the bases have to be the same. In this case, they're both base x. What if we look at this with real numbers? Well, we have base x to the sixth power divided by base x to the fourth power, so this is going to be x to the six minus four, or x squared, six minus four is two. The reason this works is because if you think about x to the sixth, that's six x's multiplied together. One, two, three, four, five, six, divided by, in the denominator we have x to the fourth, which means four x's multiplied together. So one, two, three, four. If we cancel as many x's as we can, we have four of them in the denominator, and we have one, two, three, four in the numerator, that leaves us with just these two x's here, which is going to be x squared, which is what we found. So that's why that works. If we look at another example here, again, the base doesn't matter as long as the base is matched. So here we have the variable z instead of x, but the important thing is that both bases are z, so we can combine these into z to the three minus two, or z to the first power, which is the same thing as just z. If we look at the next example, we realize that we can also use this when we have negative exponents involved. So because our bases are the same again, a and a, this is gonna be equal to a to the exponent in the numerator, six, minus the exponent in the denominator, so minus a negative four, because this is a to the negative four. This is gonna be a to the six plus four, because subtracting a negative is the same as adding. We can cancel every two negative signs, so these become a positive sign. Six plus four is 10, so this is a to the 10th power. That should also make sense to us, because whenever we have a negative exponent, we can make the exponent positive as long as we move the whole term into the numerator, if it's in the denominator, or into the denominator, if it's in the numerator. So this one, a to the negative four, is already in the denominator. We can make it a to the positive four if we just move it up here into the numerator. So if we put a to the positive four, now we'd suddenly have a to the positive four times a to the positive six, which we know is a to the four plus six, or a to the 10. So that's another way we can double check ourselves. Let's look at something more complicated here. We have x to the negative six, y to the four, z to the fifth in the numerator, and x to the negative six, y to the five, z to the two in the denominator. These are all multiplied together, so we can still just look at like bases. We wanna compare like bases of x, like bases of y, and like bases of z. So we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Here we have x to the negative six over x to the negative six, so we get x to the negative six minus a negative six, y to the four over y to the five, so y to the four minus five, and then z to the fifth over z squared, so z to the five minus two. When we simplify here, we're gonna get x to the negative six minus a negative six is the same as plus six, so plus six, y to the four minus five, or y to the negative one, and z to the five minus two, or z cubed. Negative six plus a positive six is gonna be zero, so we'll get x to the zero, y to the negative one, z cubed. x to the zero we know is one, anything times one is still itself, so this one just cancels here. And now we have y to the negative one, z cubed. But in the same way that we moved a to the negative four into the numerator and it became a to the positive four, here we have a y to the negative one in our numerator. We can move it to the denominator and get y to the positive one. So this is just gonna have z cubed left in the numerator. We move this y to the negative one to the denominator and it becomes y to the positive one but writing y to the first power is unnecessary. This one is implied, so we just get z cubed over y for our final answer. You could have also done this a different way where you said, I have x to the negative six over x to the negative six. Because those are identical, I could have canceled them right away and just ended up with a one. I also could have moved this x to the negative six from the denominator to the numerator, and it would have become a positive six, and moved this x to the negative six in the numerator to the denominator, and it would 
would become positive. So these would have flipped places and I would have ended up with x to the positive 6 over x to the positive 6. And either way, I just would have gotten those to cancel because I can see 6 minus 6 is 0. Then for these two, instead of always taking the numerator exponent minus the denominator exponent, what we can do is look to see which of the terms has the larger exponent and then subtract in that numerator or denominator. So here's what I mean. If we look at our y's, we have y to the fourth in the numerator and y to the fifth in the denominator. Since five is larger than four, we can put in the denominator right away y to the five minus four. So we wanna put it wherever the exponent is larger. Here for the z's, we have five and two, five is larger larger than 2 and that's in the numerator so we want to put the z in the numerator and say z to the 5 minus 2. In other words wherever the exponent is larger that's where the variable is going to end up and then we could have just simplified this to z cubed over y to the first power or just y to the first. And notice that that's the same answer that we came up with when we did it the longer way. So however you want to do it is fine as long as you follow all the rules you're still going to get the correct answer.